So hello again everyone. Uh, this particular video is going to be involving cruise control transducer found on many a GM vehicle. <coughs> now years ago on my 76 Fleetwood uh, the cruise is the only thing that didn't work and I ended up finding out what the problem was and fixing it. The shop manual on those old cars is very informative, very descriptive, but it's like when you read through it on the cruise control on the transducer, if you're like me, I had to take it apart and see what in the hell they were talking about because it was like, I, I'll take your word for it, I guess, because I don't even know what they're talking about. So anyhow, uh, got it working. Now we have the 74 Eldorado here that speedometer didn't work and the cable was stripped and broke because the transducer. So two things to keep in mind. The transducer, the speedometer cable goes off the training to the small end, the big end goes out to the speedometer. So whether it's in operation or not, it should, if correct, work the speedometer. In my case, it did not, all because of this. So this little bushing that presses into the housing and the shaft was frozen. And now she spins freeze a breeze. And this is the best looking one of these I've ever been into, so I figured do a video. So, um, in the geared part, the cover, obviously the gears, you can see the one bushing in there on the top, and I had to tap this one out because it's, you know, it was frozen, it's made to it. So, this is the speedometer uh, drive gear, basically, for the housing, and it sits in there. This, when carefully pressed back in, obviously the gear on the bottom that we can see drives that. So there's your speedometer drive. This spins off the transmission, it's going to turn the speedometer. Now there's a magnet in there. Here's your magnet, sandwiched between two fine pieces of steel. So there's one operation. Now, the thing to keep in mind on this, and if you read the shop manual or have, you'll be in the same boat I was, like, okay. So, I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I can that it made sense to me. So, this unit, I, I've checked, it, it will work uh, reassembled now that the gear drive is freed up. That was the only problem. Um, so... I'll double check if it goes on the car. But, for those who don't know, I'm going to explain this as easy as I can. So, get your gear drive. So normally, this will be flush. Obviously, the bushing has to be pressed in. That'll be flush way down inside. No big deal. That's a magnet. So, the way to think of this, in a speedometer head, the cable spins a magnet, and the magnet eventually overcomes the spring tension on the needle. Same principle. That's your magnet. This is spinning the whole time the car is in motion. Okay. On the opposite side of that, this is what you got. So you have the locating uh, thing on the end there. This disc is what the magnet reacts to. You have the spring, and you got that little bitty drum. And notice on that drum, you got this right here. So that drum is pressed to this. So this is separate, free spinning from the speedometer drive. But magnetism acts upon it, so keep that in mind. This is separate. The only mechanical, if you want to call it that, is the magnet. So just like a speedometer, as the speedometer drive spins, that magnet is going to react and try to make this move, you know, with the rotation. So, um, in the housing, down there is where the spring here, on the bottom of that, let's see here, right there, uh, 
locates. So with this in here, that, that you got a screw that holds that down there. So that is your uh, tension resistance to the rubber drum. Keep that in mind. All right. So the electronic aspect. What we have is, well, how well are you going to see this? You have a coil here. And look how the fork operation happens here. So, and also notice right there, that is a limit switch and also known as like a creep switch. So, uh, under, I think, 24 miles an hour according to the shop manual because I read just to double check. And Anyhow, it has to see uh, theoretically around 24 miles an hour and it will offset that switch and allow it to lock on. Okay, how does that work? Well, when the magnet is reacting to this, that little nub there rotates and pushes that contact, which is right there. That little contact there, allowing it to lock on. So that's how under a certain speed it will or will not allow it to engage. Okay. So, when you look at this, those forks, or the fork inside, notice how they pull in. Alright, so th there's two things I'm going to show you here. That's one. So, when it's energized, assuming you're over a certain speed, when that pulls on, there are two things that happen, and this is very important because I beat my head against the wall over this. So, the drum assembly, the way it's shaped, fits inside of those prongs there that you see. And of course, it can rotate a little bit back and forth. Now, when you preset this and the cruise comes on, when that solenoid pulls, it friction holds that rubber drum there. Okay, now the magnet will overcome that spring to a certain extent. Now this is like a perfect ballet and a balance of vacuum, the magnetism, and the spring here. That, that's the thing to keep in mind. So when locked on, it locks that drum and not only is it at a speed where it can overcome the tension of this in the spring to allow it to lock it on, okay, but also, and I'll do my best to show you this, when you energized, this here moves left and right. Now, that drum in here trying to speed faster or slower, it'll rock left and right. It's going to move this up here, this black little uh, air bleed. Okay, and I'm going to try to show you this. When you look at this close, you can see a hole there. So vacuum is going to either bleed or pull on. That is your orifice. Consider this a control valve. Only when locked on, if that drum rotates left or right due to load up a hill, slowing down, whatever, <coughs> it's going to allow more or less vacuum. So that's how that part works. Okay. So now that we know that, I'm going to show you something else. If you look close, down in here, right down here there is a white like puck looking thing that blocks manifold vac and if you look closer there is a little hole I don't know if we're going to be able to see it or not yep right there there's a little bitty hole right there that you can see so in the unloaded position or off Manifold vac comes through here, and I'll get to this next. You pull a vac on this, nothing happens. When 
this is energized the puck slides forward blocking the other hole now uh, let's see there you go you can see it there and it allows the vac to go through so this this comes to the, the engine vac side and this is a lot of stuff but it's easiest way I understand this so this is bad vac lines that were off of it so we have our controlled orifice here we have that there so this is the factory rooting uh, and this has another T so this goes to the servo which works the throttle cable at the carburetor that ties into a dump valve on the brake pedal keep that in mind so manifold vac comes in here which is blocked unless the solenoid is clicked on and it allows it to pass around and through at that moment when that happens vacuum comes through the bigger port supplies vac to the control valve which the drum opens and closes the you know controlled orifice pulls vacuum to the servo and to this the dump valve on the brake pedal now if you electronically kill it it'll go off if you hit the brake pedal if the system's correct all that vacuum releases allowing the servo to retract from the spring and releasing the throttle so manifold vac goes to it constant unless the servo pulls on that puck will open one passage close another allowing it to pull through the rest of the system so there's your vacuum end of it and again this is as simple as i can make this and it's really not difficult it's just when you read it it's like what the hell are they talking about so anyhow um there's that and i'm trying to think okay so on my fleetwood it would not work and the light was on all the time and i couldn't figure that out and only thing i found there's this paper uh, insulator here on the back of this, this uh, solenoid. And right here, uh, that wire was touching the body, so it was like a direct short to ground. So I actually took like a, a cardboard off a cigarette package and glued it to the, the back to isolate it, and it worked no more short, no more issue. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So, I'm trying to think of anything I've missed. I mean, it, it's really, when you, when you grasp how it works, it's, it's not the end of the world. But I know people have, like, probably like me, like, you know, anyhow. Um, so, provided you can test your solenoid, provided it works, you can vac pump here, smaller port, Pull vacuum, push the plunger, it should dump vacuum because it opens a circuit to this. If that's good and tight, that's a start. You can pull a vac and regulate side to side to make the little black thing slide back and forth to make sure that it bleeds and pulls vac and all. That's another thing. Piece of cake. Um, obviously, you can check on the terminals to make sure continuity is on the creep switch, as I call it, but it should be. Um, trying to think. I, I think I explained everything that, to me, was like whatever. So, gear to gear mechanical. The magnet works as a force against the reaction shaft and drum. Uh, it's a perfect balance or a ballet per se between spring tension and magnetism for that drum to barely walk back and forth depending on vehicle speed and load, which adversely affects the orifice 
and control valve to bleed or allow vacuum to regulate throttle. Um, I explained the puck down in there that blocks, which if if it's released, you apply vac here, it, it, there, it should be sealed or damn near sealed. You hit the plunger or energize the solenoid, it'll leak through the big. That big supplies to the servo for the throttle. Also, it'll go to the uh, brake pedal. It'll have a vac switch that should be sealed unless you hit the brake and it should exhaust the atmosphere. Uh, it's like a fail safe for the system even if the switch is on. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. I think I pretty well covered it. Uh, I hope I did and uh, if anybody has any questions let me know. Um, it's a very to me, it's oddball as hell, but it's very ingenious, and there's a lot that happens in such a little bitty pot metal housing. Um, but interesting. It's definitely interesting, and, and I've, I've yet to not fix one, and this is uh, number two, so maybe I can say I've yet to not fix two. I don't know. Uh, I hope this is helpful. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, I can explain better and give you the factory like nomenclature on this stuff but nobody's going to know what in the hell you're talking about anyhow so i hope this helps and uh i'm going to get this back on so i can drive this car with a working speedometer and see if the cruise works if it does i'll be ecstatic and it should because i'm gonna you know hook it all up and uh yeah i appreciate it as always thank you very much and uh, we'll see what else transpires for another video. So y'all have a good one.